perspective and a solid philosophical foundation are two incredibly important things to developing your unique sound and identity as an artist and songwriter. So we're going to dive into that today, talking about getting your songwriting perspective right. Hello, friend. Welcome to another episode of Songwriter Theory. Today, we are talking about getting your songwriting perspective right. Let's dive right into it. Marriage. Wait a second. Why are we talking about marriage? I'm going to give you an example. Marriage works perfectly when each person decides to put the other above themselves, right? Because if I put my wife first and my wife puts me first, then we both have somebody who's looking out for us first, right? But we don't have to selfishly do it for ourselves. So I don't have to look out out for the big number one or whatever stupid term people use, right? Because my wife is looking out for me and I'm looking out for her. And that way we both get to be selfless, right? Because we're putting somebody else before ourselves. And then it works out because we also are still supported via we both put each other first. So if I volunteer to do the dishes, right, putting her first, she also will pause Parks and Recreation or the office that we're watching for the 50th time and say, hey, you need to get to work. You need to go record a podcast, right? So she's putting me first and I'm also putting her first. I volunteered to do the dishes and then she decided to tell me, hey, we've watched enough TV. You need to go work on one of your projects. Right. So that's both having the right perspective. A part of having the right perspective as a songwriter is to put your music above your ego. What do I mean by that? So your ego is a part of who you are, right? All of us have an ego. But really, our ego often holds us back. If you were here last week, we talked about how ego is can be sort of that enemy when it comes to writer's block, right? Because your ego is telling you, oh, I have to write something, I have to write something that is good, right? I can't write garbage. I'd rather write nothing than write garbage, right? And that's sort of a, a the main thing we started with last week. Um, so ego again comes up here. It's easy to have self-doubt or wonder if people will like you, will like your music, right? It's easy to kind of let that seep in. Like as you're writing a song, you think to yourself, will people like this? Will they respond well? Is it, is it catchy enough? Is it, is it interesting enough? Um, Did I make the lyrics clear enough? Will people understand exactly what's going on? Will people get the wrong idea from my song, right? Like maybe my lyrics are kind of vague and people will think it's this like dirty song when it's not, or people will think, you know, it's, it's an, it's, it's means the opposite of what I intend it to mean. And some people will get it all wrong and then they'll think badly of me, right? It's easy to have all of those worries. It's easy to be paralyzed out of fear of what people will think of your music, but don't. Pour yourself into your music. Put the music first, right? And this is something that I really wish all the bands that I was a fan of, w- fan of would also do. So this is also my plea to all of you. Put the music first. Make great music. Make the music that you need to make. Make the music that speaks to you right now. Don't think about, well, what do the fans want? What do the fans deserve? What do people need, right? Um, and, and if you're a Christian like me, you, you might have felt some pressure at some point that like, oh, well, you have all this talent, so you need to write Christian music in quotes uh, because I don't really buy into the, uh, like, you, there can be music that is intended to praise God, but the idea of Christian music to me is a, a silly, like, silly Music can't be Christian. Only people can. Anyway. um, So anyway, I understand that, right? If you've ever struggled with that, um, with with this, you know, people sort of feeling like, oh, well, if you have this talent, you need to do this, right? You You need to write happy songs. You need to do this. You don't need to do those things. 
Okay, you don't need to do those things. You need to write what you need to write, whatever your calling is, whatever the thing that resonates with you is, right? So for me, for example, happy music just often doesn't resonate or come out of me. I I truly feel that I am not meant to write happy music. All of my songs generally tend to have a sort of light at the end of the tunnel. They tend to be cup half full or sorry, half empty, but, but, but I like to insert that light at the end of the tunnel, right? It's this idea that I'm struggling with something right now, but it's not just all despair, right? I understand it will be okay. I understand that, uh, th- there, there is, there are good things ahead that this isn't all dismal and, you know, I, you know, I'm depressed and I can't do anything and life sucks, right? Like there is that light there that's at least implied, But for me personally, often what's resonated with me, the things that got me through hard times in life was were the songs that other artists wrote when they were going through something difficult. Because I think we all, maybe not all of us, a lot of us though, struggle with the concept of feeling alone, right? And maybe not always, right? I feel a lot less alone most of the time than I used to, right? So now maybe I have that day where I just feel so alone and like no one understands and 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 just, you know, alone. If you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, e- even if, you know, I'm holding my wife, right? You can still feel alone, right? And it's not her fault. It's nothing she did. And, you know, the same the other way around, right? Some, t- some days, actually tonight, uh, she's talked about how she felt alone today and it wasn't anything I did. It wasn't that I didn't spend enough time with her. It was nothing like that. Just sometimes you feel that way. Right. So for me personally, the music that spoke to me and the music that, that really got to me and got me through those difficulties were, were sad songs. And, and a lot of them had, had, a, had sort of a light, but some of them really even didn't. And there's, there's something about, someone else has been through what I'm going through, right? And it's not that you're happy that somebody else suffered. It's just that everybody wants to not be alone. Humans are social creatures, right? Even if even if you are a person that is an introvert, right? I'm technically an introvert. You might not believe that because you think, wow, you can talk to yourself for an awful long amount of time. And I also am, last I checked, decent at public speaking and stuff. So I I have some tendencies that don't seem like I'm an introvert, but believe me, I'm an introvert. If I'm at a party for long enough, I'm I'm very done, very fast. And I want to not see any humans. So even as an introvert, we're social creatures. We need someone. Or in the words of Sanctus Real, oh, oh, we need each other. Drop a like if you get that reference and appreciate it. Um, And drop a like if you're enjoying this video. If you're on a podcast, you should go leave a review on iTunes, preferably five stars. If you feel like you can't, you know, you you know the deal. Email me, joseph at songwritertheory.com. Explain to me how I can do better. How can I earn five stars from you? Because I don't want you to give me five stars if you think I don't deserve it. Uh, I want you to explain to me why I don't deserve it. And so I can fix that, right? If, 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 if this content sucks, I want to know so that I can make it not suck. Right. Capiche? Sound good? Good. All right. So for me, the sadder music has always resonated with me. So if every artist decided, oh, it's our job, it's our obligation to give people positivity via all these, you know, songs about like, yay, I'm so happy to be alive. Right. That would give all the people who are like me, which um, there's plenty of us. Nothing to to sort of be our medicine, if you will. And I'm not saying music is actual medicine, but you, as a songwriter, I assume, can resonate with the idea of the incredible powers of that a song can have to make you feel better. Right? And and hey, maybe that doesn't resonate with you. Maybe you just enjoy music. Music makes you happy all the time. You don't have any depressive tendencies. You don't struggle with any of that. In that case, great. But music always speaks to us. And and music, different types of music are going to speak to different people. So you as a songwriter, don't worry, I'm bringing it back. You as a songwriter, 
need to concentrate on making the right music for you to write and keeping it real, right? Whether you like him or not, NF right now is is crushing it partially because his whole thing is real, right? And, and he's transparent and he's real and he doesn't necessarily follow the rules of what you need to do as a rapper, right? Like a, like he he does his thing, but he's real about it, right? He's not talking about stuff that doesn't resonate with him. He's talking about his life, his struggles, and he's so real about it. To the point that me, as somebody who generally doesn't like rap, I really like NF. I do. I, I went to his concert with my wife, thoroughly enjoyed it. I really love his his album, The Search, the last one. I thought, really, really good album. Because it spoke to me, because it was so, it was so real. And, you know, I know it's quoted all the time, but the whole Henry Ford thing, right? If I had asked people what they wanted... They would have said faster horses, right? And I don't remember if that's one of those that like is credited to him, but he didn't really say it. Somebody else said it and it everybody thinks Henry Ford. I don't remember. Regardless, though, it's true, right? A lot of times the biggest breakthroughs are not giving people what they want. It's giving them what they need that they didn't know they needed, that they didn't know could exist, Right. It's kind of like I've talked about this before. You don't want to be the second coming of. Insert artist you like here. Right. I love Vertical Horizon. Love Vertical Horizon. I have referred to Matt Scannell as my spirit animal thousands of times. Their music has has spoken to me since the moment I discovered it. And they became my favorite band about 20 seconds into the first song I started listening to, I think, way back in high school, and they have never relinquished that spot, and they will always have a special place in my heart. And Matt, if you ever watch this, thank you. You're an incredible songwriter, an inspiration, and your music got me through a lot. Not that I expect you to ever see this, but I, I like to think. <laughs> I like to think. It'd be amazing. One of my one of my goals is to share share the stage with Matt Scannell just once in my life. But anyway, uh, Matt Scannell's lead singer and ba- he basically is Vertical Horizon at this point. But anyway, so you don't want as much as I love Vertical Horizon, right? I don't want to be the second Vertical Horizon. There can there can only be one, right? There can only be one journey. There can all, only be one Taylor Swift. Thank God, am I right? Um, there can only be one Ariana Grande. There can only be one. Again, insert whatever artist you like here. You don't want to be the second one that copies that. The magic happens once. You have to be you. So don't think about what people want. You know what people want? They want covers of songs that they already know, that they've heard a billion times on the radio. That's what people want, right? They want to hear the 50 billionth rendition of Don't Stop Believin' or some crappy Taylor Swift song. And by the way, I'm not saying those two are the same. Don't Stop Believin' is a solid song. Um... Anyway, and if you're wondering, why is he hating so hard on Taylor Swift? Subscribe, click the little notification bell, and over time, you'll get more glimpses of my my anti-Taylor Swift uh, perspective. But anyway, so don't think about what the people want, right? So even if you have, if you're a big artist that for whatever reason is watching this right now, I guarantee you, your, your, your fans might think that they want you to stay in the same exact sound and keep doing the same thing over and over, but they don't. They want you to write, or at least the true fans, want you to write what speaks to you. Because to go back to Vertical Horizon, they the last album that they did, that or he did, because again, it's basically one guy at this point, he has bandmates, but, you know, he's a songwriter and the main guitarist, and he, so he does it all, except drums and bass. And Yeah, so the last album, complete departure from their sound. He's just like, I'm going to do an electronic album based on, like, 80s bands like Depeche Mode and stuff. And I loved it. Was I sad about it at first? Because I love their typical sound, absolutely. But you know what? He crushed it. And I love Matt Scannell music. Why? Because it's Matt Scannell's writing, Matt Scannell's heart, if you will, that speaks to me. I don't give a rip about what instruments he decided to use or not. And I would much rather him write from the heart 
an album that's a very big departure from their previous sound because he felt like it and because that was what was speaking to him at the time, than to write an uninspired copy of what they've done before. I would much rather that. Don't, wouldn't you? Let me know in the comments below if you, if you agree with this. Do you agree with that you would rather your favorite artist write something that speaks to them that maybe isn't what you had hoped it to be? It maybe, you know, doesn't have as many guitars or has too many guitars or is too country or isn't country enough or, you know, whatever. You would rather them do move apart from, move away from what you were expecting if that is what's speaking to them and that would be genuine to them at the time. Because then the music's going to be more genuine and real, right? And in theory, if you like an artist, hopefully you don't just like their sound, right? It's it's that their lyrics speak to you. It's the way the writer thinks speaks to you, right? It's sort of like why you might choose to watch these videos over someone else's videos, right? It doesn't mean that I'm better than them, right? There's plenty of people talking about songwriting on YouTube, Plenty of people talking about songwriting in podcasts, right? But maybe the way I communicate resonates with you, right? Maybe the way I break down fundamentals resonates with you. Sometimes the way I talk about practical tips instead of just recycling the same five tips it feels like a lot of other people do of like, here's five tips to write songs faster and crap like that, right? Which uh, there's some validity to that. So I don't mean to make fun of those people, but um you know, I, I, I harp on practical and stuff. And, and you know what? It might even be my personality, right? Some people probably started listening to me, started watching me and thought, ugh, I can't stand him. He's got something about him that just rubs me the wrong way. And some of you thought to yourself, oh, this guy's kind of funny or, oh, this guy, I like the way he communicates, right? He's, he's kind of chill. Maybe, maybe you think of me. I, I, I don't know how you think of me. Let me know in the comments or let me know in an email, joseph at songwritertheory.com. But like, why, why do you listen to me? So... <laughs> Uh, why do you listen to me? Why would you do such a thing? Uh, that's not how I mean that. You know what I mean? Um, but right. And, and, and music is the same way, right? It's there's, there are people out there that you, your way of thinking through things, your way of writing music will speak to. And you don't need to worry about like, even if you have a huge fan base, don't worry about it. Write what is genuine to you. Write what is genuine to you. Write what you need to write. Right? Don't worry about, oh, I need to write a happy song, or I don't have enough happy songs, or I don't have enough songs about this subject material, or even worse, I don't have a subject about some political opinion I have, which nobody gives a rip about, right? Like, don't, please, also, please, don't preach in your songs. Okay, this is why, again, as a Christian, I generally very much dislike Christian music, actually, because I truly detest, even if I agree with the worldview or even if I agree with something, I I hate when I feel like I'm being preached at in a movie or a song or anything. Don't preach at people. Your worldview will come through in, in different minor ways in your music. Yes. And that's totally fine. Right. You got to be genuine to you. But don't write a song that's just like literally for some agenda to like change people's mind about it. Don't do that. Don't write with an agenda. That's not art. Okay. That's not art. So don't do that. I won't take any shots about certain artists who have done this recently, but just, just please don't. And again, it doesn't matter whether we agree or not on said worldview or whatever. It's just a general rule. Cause again, it's just, I, I hate it even when I agree with it. It's just the worst. Anyway, So don't worry about writing what you think people will like. And another reason for this, right, is a lot of us, the main people who are going to listen, you know, it might be your friends and family. And here's a harsh reality I've I've talked about before. I think I did a whole episode about this. Uh, Well, no, it was one of three things. I talked about three main things that... Uh, I wish I had known before because I wouldn't have gotten so discouraged as a younger songwriter. Uh, And one of the things I talked about was this false expectation that like people like me, so they will like my music. Right. And so if family and friends are the main people who are going to hear your songs, right? Let's say you're just starting, started get getting into songwriting. 
right? That's why you're here. You're like, okay, I'm going to start songwriting. I'm writing my first songs. And you're so excited and you're going to show them to your friends and family. And that's great. And I encourage you to do that. But keep in mind, people who like you and people who like your art are two different sets of people. They are. Okay. There's plenty of artists that I love that maybe if I knew them personally, I would detest them as a person. Do I care? No, I do not. There are many people that I may like as a person, but I don't like their art, right? I might not like the paintings of a friend that I hold very dear, right? Maybe their style just doesn't speak to me. That's fine. It doesn't mean anything about how good they are. Nothing, because it just is a style that doesn't speak to me, right? I'm sure plenty of my friends don't love my musical style, right? There, are, I have a couple friends that are like, noticeably silent when I'm like, hey, here's the new song I made. Check it out. I have some friends that are noticeably silent about those. And, you know, I take the liberty to assume they don't really love it. And you know what? I don't care. I learned to not care. Because at some point you realize people who like me and people who like my art are going to be two different things. So don't worry about who's going to like your art or not. Okay? Just, it's not your problem. Your problem is to write something that speaks to you, that helps you, that speaks to your heart and put it out there. You got to put it out there, but your responsibility is not to write music that people will like, which is not to say people won't like your music, right? You just need to be true to you because again, you don't want to be the second version of Taylor Swift. Goodness. You don't even want to be the first one. Boom. Got her again. Um, I mean, her money wouldn't be bad though. Right. Am I right? Um, so you want to be the first rate of you because that's your best chance to be great. Right. And great doesn't necessarily mean successful in millions of dollars. Right. Which brings up another point. You need to concentrate on writing good music, music that speaks to you, true music, real music, and not worry about. For example, if you're in this for like, oh, I want to be famous and I want to be a rock star and I want all the ladies to love me, stop it, quit, sell your guitar or burn it if it's a crappy guitar and it's not even worth the time to sell and never return, if that's why. Because it's a terrible reason and it won't turn out that way. <laughs> you need to write good stuff. Write well, right? Christopher Nolan, if he listened to people, would have kept making Batman movies for the rest of his life. And he, yes, did create the greatest superhero film of all time in The Dark Knight. And if you don't agree with that, you are factually wrong by any measurement whatsoever. And it is not close. So don't even try to just don't embarrass yourself by trying to even remotely argue like Avengers or something. Please don't embarrass yourself. Please, please, please. Not that you were going to, because anybody who listens to these podcasts knows Christopher Nolan, the man. All right. So, but he went on to make Inception, Dunkirk, Interstellar, right? He knew better. Nobody was asking for Interstellar or Dunkirk. Nobody was asking Christopher Nolan for a war movie. I certainly wasn't. I don't like war movies, right? I, the whole brothers in arms shtick. And I get that it's a real thing, right? It just, it just, it doesn't speak to me. I'm not in the military. I respect the heck of the military. One of my best friends is in the military. I love the military. I respect the military, but it's just not something that I can relate to, right? I, I, and I just, the whole... It's a bunch of guys, young guys, you know, 20 year olds getting shot at and five of them are five of the seven of them are going to be dead by the end of the movie or whatever. It just doesn't resonate with me for whatever reason. But Christopher Nolan came in and made the movie I never would have asked him to make. And I loved it. I've seen it three times now. Might get better every watch. It's so, so, so good. I'm so glad he made it. And it's now considered one of, if not the greatest war movie ever. Like that's up, considered up there with like the Saving Private Ryans and stuff. Nobody would have asked for that though. 
So the best things that you can do for your fans, right? Nolan shouldn't have made more Batman movies because he said he had it, the story had run its course, right? We've all known that TV show that goes on for too long, right? We all know Scrubs, right? If if you if if you haven't watched Scrubs, watch Scrubs. The first eight seasons are great, and then watch just the first episode of nine and you'll be like what the heck is this this is the same show it seems like a, a spin-off show and you're right it does seem like a spin-off show but it is not um so be true to you be more like the good place which they ended after four seasons not because they had to but because the story was done and that is the story that it needed to be so write the music that you feel you need to Don't worry about what your friends are going to like. Don't worry about what your mom is going to like. Don't worry about whether she's going to approve of how distorted the guitars are or if it's too rock or whatever. Not that this ever happened to me, of course. Don't worry about that. Write what you need to write. And I guarantee there's, what, 8 billion now? It's probably approaching 8 billion people on the planet. If you can get even 10,000 people to love your music, which is a tiny fraction, tiny fraction of that, right? Billions of people. A billion is a thousand millions, okay? That means there are almost 8,000 million people in the world, right? That mind, never mind 10,000, right? 10,000 easily is. I mean, that's awesome, right? If you can get 10,000 people to love your music, that's a tiny fraction of the world. Absolutely tiny. A million is a tiny fraction of the world, right? Tiny. So don't worry about that stuff. Write the music you need to write. If it's sad, great. If it's happy, fine, great. If it's country, great. If it's rock, great. Doesn't matter. Write what you need to write, not what other people want you to write, not what you think other people want you to write, not what you think is going to be popular, not what you think is going to get you on the radio. None of that. Write something that is true to yourself, true to you as an artist, because you need to be true to you as an artist. Again, nobody wants a second rate anything, right? You might think, oh, well, a second rate Beatles would be good. Who's a second rate Beatles? You don't know, right? Even if you love the Beatles, even if you love the Beatles, you probably couldn't name me a second rate Beatles that came along. Why is that? Hmm. Because the magic can only be captured once with these things. You don't want to be a carbon copy of something that already existed. It's never as good. You don't want that. So don't be a carbon copy of what you think people want, right? I don't love Billie Eilish because in general, I just don't love pop music, but she's a pretty good example of her music sounds different. It just does, right? Phineas, her brother, producer, adds different sounds, right? Like he used, he uses a match being lit in a song that's, she talks about burning something or fire, I don't know, whatever. And he uses a match as like the snare, drum right like instead of a snare he uses the sound of a a match being lit little stuff like that right her sound is very low-key she just kind of you know she doesn't sing high notes and stuff she just kind of sits right there in her range and sort of whispers her vocals right that's her sound it's different and a ton of people love it right My, my wife loves it not for me i don't like it i don't please don't make me listen to Billie eilish I think Ocean Eyes is okay, maybe. Like, it's, it's, I don't hate it, but it's not for me. But do you think Billie Eilish cares? No, because she's writing music that's true to her, and there's a ton of people who do love it, including my wife, who someday might drag me to a concert that I do not want to go to, right? Um, man, I wasn't worried about that until I just said that. Now I'm a little worried. She doesn't drag me to concerts, but... Um, she was talking about how we need to go to a concert, and we've seen all of my favorite artists, it seems, so might be in trouble. So anyway, be a first-rate you. Be a first-rate you. Write the music you need to write. 
put the music first. Put it above the people who are going to listen to your music. Even put it above yourself in a sense, right? And I'm not saying make yourself miserable over your music, but put it above that ego, right? We all have that ego. Believe me, I have an ego. I have a big enough ego that I decided, hey, I'm going to go on YouTube and make a podcast and teach people songwriting, right? That that requires a little bit of an ego, right? (laughs) Just kidding. Um, (laughs) I have to make fun of myself, right? I made fun of Taylor Swift multiple times, so I, I need to somehow make a dig at myself, right? So we all struggle with ego, but you need to put the music above that ego struggle. Let me know if this resonated with you. If you're on YouTube, drop a comment. Let me know. Does this resonate with you? Does this inspire you? Does Because sometimes, if you, if you been, again, if you've been watching or listening for a while, I like to sometimes talk about songwriting philosophy and then sometimes also sort of inspire, right? Because sometimes we just need something to kick our butt to be inspired again, right? So I think this was more towards that inspiration there are certainly tips in here, but you know, a lot of our content, a lot of my content's a lot more practical tips and you know, here's how to, you know, three steps to make your lyrics better and stuff like that. And, you know, this was a little more philosophical, right? This is this is a little more soft skills, if you wish. If you wish, if you will. Clearly I can't do phrases at like one in the morning when I am finishing this podcast slash video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like subscribe, click the little notification bell. If you're on the podcast, you know, I already said this, but I'm saying it again because, hey, you, yeah, you, you've been listening to this podcast for like months, maybe even a year, maybe even years now, maybe as we approach the two year anniversary of songwriter theory, which is crazy to think about, you've been with me since basically day one and you still have not left me a review. So you've consumed over a hundred podcasts or videos of mine. So like 50 hours of content and you have not taken the time, the five minutes tops to go leave a review on iTunes. This is your time. This is your time. It's all I ask for in return. That's it. That's all I want. So regardless Always feel free to email me, joseph at songwritertheory.com. I do notice that when I actually say that in podcasts, more people email me. And when I stop explicitly saying to feel free to email me, people don't do it as much. So I want to make sure that you all know that I am always open to emails, not just when I say it, uh, because I do notice that trend. So joseph at songwritertheory.com, again, spelled J-O-S-E-P-H at songwritertheory.com. Let me know if you you would like me to cover something. If you're on YouTube, drop it in the comments below. And let me know in the comments below what part of what we talked about today you struggled with. Let me know. I want to know. Because I I, I struggle with, with... I've struggled at different times with all of these different aspects. Some more than others. Uh, Probably the ego thing more um, than caring whether people... Uh, like my stuff, I guess. I've sort of always had a little bit more confidence maybe than the average person with songwriting. Maybe not always, but ever since I dared to show anybody any of my songs. So let me know what you thought resonated with you, which you can relate to. Let me know if you thought this was helpful. And hey, if you want more things that are helpful, I of course have my free guide, 10 Ways to Start writing a song right now. It gives 10 totally different ways to start writing a song because if you just always pick up the guitar and start strumming chords and that's how you always start to write a song, hey, that gets old sometimes. You're going to start to produce the same sounding music. So I give you 10 totally different ways to start writing a song, five from a more lyrical aspect, five from a more... Did I say lyrical already? Whatever. One is five music, five lyrical, because, hey, sometimes it's better to start with lyrics. Sometimes it's better to start with music. And, you know, sometimes it's just better to start with a theme, which is sort of lyrical more. And sometimes it's better to start with a bass line. So if that seems interesting to you, if you think that will be helpful, go pick that up. Link in the description below. 
Seth, songwritertheory.com slash free guide. If you're on the podcast and you don't want to click a link, that's songwritertheory.com slash free guide. Again, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. And I will talk to you next time.